Hi everybody, welcome back to the TQS Embellishing class. I'm Lauren Volchek, and before I begin our lesson today, I want to remind everybody to um, post your pictures of the progress of your project. Um, every week that you post a picture, we'll put your name into a drawing to give away the sample quilt at the end of the class. So, um, what we did last week was our metallic stitching. We did zigzag and some straight stitch in the sky block. So your quilt should look about like this now. You've got your raw edge applique for lesson one finished and your machine metallic stitching for lesson two. Today we're going to do a little bit more machine stitching just with some regular 30 weight rayon and um, some stitches that you know people typically don't think of to use for quilting. What I've got in my machine is a 30 weight rayon in the top and I've just got my R fill um, 50 weight in the bobbin so that it'll blend more with the back of the quilt. Um, we talked last week about using a practice or a trial sandwich which I'm going to do again this week since I've changed my thread up here and I just want to check out that it's going to work the way I think it's going to work before I do it on my quilt. So the first stitch that we're going to work on today is called a triple stretch stitch. It's a little bit of a tongue twister and it's a utility stitch that people don't really usually think of as a decorative stitch. But because the needle is passing um, the same spot three times, it gives your straight stitch a little bit more visual power. Um, so on my machine, it's stitch number two. I'm just going to set it to stitch number two and um, give it a go on my practice sandwich. So I'm just stitching along, it's going back and forth a little bit for the triple stretch stitch and it looks like it's going to work fine. So let's pull that out and I'll show it to you in the camera. Right here is the triple stretch stitch. And you can see how much more thread that you can see next to it right here. I used the exact same thread with just my regular straight stitch. So you can see how you just get a little bit more punch. And I'm, I'm using a variegated thread so that I'll get a little bit of um, change in the color of the thread as I continue along. I picked out a green because on my quilt what we're going to be doing is sort of a long grass effect. We're going to be working in the heart flower block and I'm just going to start, you know, pretty high up on the block. Make sure that you have some tails, you know, there's some length to your thread that you're starting with. I'll show you why you want that a little bit later when we're tying our threads off, but just make sure you have some tails. Okay, so I'm just going to set this on, you know, just pick a spot anywhere on the block and I'm going to begin stitching. And because grass isn't real stiff and rigid, tall grass, I'm going to give it a little curve. And I'm, I'm going to go, I'm not going to worry about going over the top of my leaf. Just continue on. Let the stitch do its thing. And gently curving all the way down to the end of the block. Alright, so where you've stitched off the end of your quilt, you can go ahead and clip your threads because that's going to be contained in your binding. But up here where we started, and I told you to leave a tail of thread, it's in the middle of the block. So let me just show you how I tie off my, the edges of my thread. I'm going to go ahead and thread um, my rayon thread into my needle and pull it through to the back side of the quilt. So back here I've got my bobbin thread and the top tail thread. I'm just going to tie a square knot, one, two parts to the square knot, and then I'm going to thread both of these threads into the needle at the same time. I'm going to go into just the sandwich part of my quilt. I'm not coming through to the front. You know, I'm going to extend my needle down a little ways through the body of my quilt, pull those threads through, and I'm going to give them a little tug till I feel that knot pop into the batting. Then you can clip, clip off your tails. 
and then from both the back and the front, you've got a clean start. There's no knot and there's no funny tail threads. And that's really it for your tall grass. So you can put as much or as little um, grass into the back of your heart flower block. This is going to be the quilting for this particular block. You can also, some people have tons of decorative stitches, some people have just a few. So if you have another stitch that you think is fun, here I've used a feather stitch and it looks sort of like wheat or it has kind of that grassy seed head look. So I used a little bit of that um, in my grass as well. The sky's the limit. I can't wait to see you post your pictures so I can see what you come up with with decorative stitching to um, quilt the heart flower block. Now for today's lesson there's just one other thing that we'd like to cover and that is couching. We're going to couch our stems. So here we've got a ribbon. We've also got some cording on the bud block and then we've got a rickrack stem for the tulip. And I'm going to start with the ribbon stem simply because I couched it on with the same triple stretch stitch that we used for the grass. If I lay my ribbon onto my quilt, I know from experience that it's going to slide around and kind of wiggle around a little bit um, as I'm stitching down it. So I'm going to use a glue pen to hold this ribbon in place. It sort of is like a basting. Um, before I stitch on top of it. And what I've got here, this is a really slick glue stick. It's by Fonz and Porter. It looks like a pen and it's real tiny at the top so you can be real accurate with it. It's made for fabric so it's really great. If you're not comfortable putting glue on your quilt, um, you can go ahead and use the little quarter inch fusible tape, but this will hold it just perfectly for what we're gonna do. And because it's, you know, the product is made for people who are going to use it on fabric and do stitching on it, it won't gum up your needle. All right, so that, that right there, just doing a little bit of that, will hold my ribbon in place so that I can couch it. You'll notice that I've come up here with my raw edge, looks like it's coming up just a little bit, with my raw edge into um, the heart. You don't want it to be right at the edge. Well, let me just actually do a little bit more glue on here just to make sure it's good and secure. Okay. You want your raw edge to be up into the heart. We had a couple of appliques the first lesson that said lesson three on them. So after we've couched our ribbon on, I can come in with my other applique and set it on here and that'll cover that raw edge. But for right now, I'm just going to couch on top of this ribbon with my triple stretch stitch. It should look about the same as when we're quilting. Pop it in here. And away we go. So I'm just, all I'm doing is stitching straight down the middle of this ribbon and because I've used um, a little bit of glue stick, it's holding in place for me just quite nicely. All right. So I can clip my threads. Now this time, it's up to you as to whether you want to tie that thread off or not. It's going to be hidden under my fusible, so I'm just going to go ahead and clip it. The back thread, I'm going to pull into the body of my quilt. Thread it in right where it's coming out. Come out a little ways later and clip it off. Okay. So you can run however many, stitch, however many stitch lines you would like till you feel that this ribbon is, is securely couched on there. On the sample I did three, but for now I'm just going to leave one right down the center and move on to couching our rickrack and our cording. For this I'm going to switch back to a zigzag stitch and I'm going to use my little um, practice sandwich to get the zigzag stitch the size I would like for it to be. Let me just test and see what the default looks like. Okay. 
So that's a nice average zigzag. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with the default zigzag stitch on my machine. I've got a piece of green rickrack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stabilize it with the glue stick, just like I did the ribbon. And this time, on my tulip, I do actually want the edge of my rickrack to be right at the edge of my tulip. We have a little applique leaf piece that'll go on top of that. So if you just start it right at the edge of the tulip, and I'm gonna zigzag right down the center of my rickrack. I've gone all the way down the center of my rickrack. And I'll, I'll trim and tie off my threads on this later. I also want to show you how, to, so on this couching, let me just say the difference. You know, we've got our rickrack sort of sticking out either edge, and that's fine, that's sort of the nature of rickrack. But I'm gonna put a piece of cording on the quilt to use as a stem for these buds. And when I couch my cording, I'm gonna want my zigzag to cover the entire piece of cording and go just barely beyond it on either side. So if I look at the sample zigzag that I did just a few minutes ago, that's probably a little bit wider than I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just reduce the width of my zigzag for this one. I also like my thread that I'm couching with to match my cording or my yarn, whatever you choose to, um, to use for your stem. So I'm just gonna really quickly change out my green thread to an orange thread. Okay, so now my needle is threaded. I've got orange thread in here. And I want this stem to sort of make an arch coming around through the buds and then in between these two leaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it start a little ways into the bud. I'm just gonna hold it with my fingers until I've zigzagged a couple stitches on it. Okay, I'm putting my foot down. Oh, back up, now it's down. And I'm gonna zig on one side of the cording and zag on the other. And then once it's held down with the couching, I can just sort of guide my piece of cording with one hand and I'm zigzagging back and forth over it. And I can start to turn my quilt because I want my stem to have a little bit of a curve to it. And I'm gonna come down and zigzag all the way off the end of my quilt. I can trim my thread ends and the excess of the cording off. And then I'll tie this piece off the same way that I tied this one off. All right, so that's it for the lesson for this week as far as using your decorative pre-programmed stitches, but there's a little bit of homework that you're gonna need to do to be ready for class tomorrow. You'll want to put on all of the appliques, the raw edge appliques that were le labeled lesson three and those will cover your raw edge areas. And there's an extra leaf that goes over the rickrack here. Then the message block, the tulip block, and the bud block can be quilted however you'd like for them to, to be quilted. You can quilt them you know, with, with channel stitching like I did with the feed dogs up. You can try some free motion quilting, but go ahead and quilt these three blocks leave this bottom leaf block without quilting on it because we'll go over that when we're doing some hand stitching. So that's it for this week. Don't forget to post your projects and I look forward to seeing you when we're working on some hand stitches next week. <laughs>